Hey guys, what's going on? It's RC Knockout, and I am back with another video. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Nolan. In today's video, I have got more upgrades for the 100 mile per hour Traxxas Slash project. Now, if you watched in the last video, we ran it with the body on, actually. I just did a few test runs. It was not with the GPS on. Uh, the GPS was actually giving me a bunch of misreadings. It wasn't giving the accurate speed. Um, so I was just testing it with the body on to see how aerodynamic and how planted it stayed. And actually, to about two-thirds, three-quarters three throttle, it actually stayed pretty planted to the ground. I was very impressed. So I'm feeling a lot better about getting up to 100 miles per hour with this body on, guys. Now, we haven't even quite reached 100 miles per hour even with the body off. If you've been watching the videos, you'll know I think a video or two ago, we hit 99.9 .9 miles per hour. Now, I need to buy a new GPS. I need to have two GPSs on this RC to kind of verify one another. So that's why I want to have multiple GPSs on it when I go for my 100 mile per hour run. So I need to buy two new GPSs. That one's being faulty for some reason. I'm going to try to reset it, um, but we've gone pretty darn fast with this. But the goal is to go fast with the body on. Um, so in today's video, guys, the thing I'm going to do has really nothing to do with aerodynamics. It really has nothing to do with anything but grip. Um, and now the other thing, guys, since the last video, the wheelie bar broke off. This wheelie bar was made for a two-wheel drive Traxxas Slash, like a dragster. It extended like all the way out to here, but it broke like a video or two ago. And actually the last video, when I got up to 97 or 98 miles per hour, I wasn't even running with it. But the thing I noticed with the body on, it did make the rear end kind of a little bit squirrely. So I think it was getting some air up underneath it and taking a lot of weight off the rear end. And so I do think it might be a little bit more prone to lifting up. So I went ahead and I zip tied the crap out of this wheelie bar back on just what's left of the wheelie bar just so if this thing does lift up this will scrape up against the ground that's really the only reason why I did it I just zip tied the crap out of it so if this thing does lift up um, it'll keep this thing from flipping over itself but this is gonna lead into what the upgrade is to for today guys because I just said it has to do with grip um, now after the end of the last video I was hearing a noise on the last few runs I did and I did not know what the noise was, realized after I filmed the video that I broke a wheel. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but right here, the wheel and the tire split right here on the rear. So that is gonna be no good for getting us up to 100 miles per hour. So that's what I'm doing in today's video, guys. I'm upgrading the wheels and tires. So I'm going with these right here. These right here are the D-Boot Hoons. They are the 42100 2.9 gold belted tires. Now, if you guys don't know the difference, I'm actually going to show um, on my, uh, I'll grab my phone real quick and I'll show you guys, but basically the gold lettering ones right here, note the ones that I have on it are the white lettering, but the gold lettering, and they also have silver lettering, the gold lettering has better grip. So the compound is different of the tire. So they're exact same tires, the D-Boot Hoons, exact same size, exact same everything, except for the compound is slightly different. And that's what I'm putting on this, guys. Now, the only disadvantage to these wheels and tires, guys, is that they're not rated for as much speed. So, I'm still thinking we can crack that 100, um, but these are made for grip, and I think grip is definitely what we need to get this little RC up to 100 miles per hour. So that's why I decided to go with these, so I'm gonna go ahead, move the camera a little bit closer, we're gonna go ahead and get these thrown on, and that's gonna be the upgrade for today, and then we're gonna go ahead and go out and test this thing. So, let me grab the camera, move it a little bit closer, and we'll jump right in this installation. All right, guys, so I just explained how there's different uh, types of tire compound for the D-Boot Hoons. And like I said, these right here are the white compound ones, the white lettering. And these are kind of the ones that they put on all the ready-to-run. So I believe this is what comes on. This is the compound that comes on the Arm Infraction stock, the Arma uh, Limitless, I think, um, and the Arma Felony. But here's the different types. There's gold label, white label, and silver. As you guys can see, here's what they're all good at. So grip. Gold has the highest grip right here. Highest grip, but life expectancy gold has got the, the lowest. So I can't expect these gold tires right here, these gold label to last very long. And for air temperature, it looks like the gold are going to work the best in the cool temperature. And it is still kind of early to mid-spring. So it's probably a good thing to have ones that are rated for more cool. Um... But then here's the one thing I was a little bit concerned about, speed rating. The gold is rated the least amount of speed, just below the white. And here you guys can see the one that's rated for the longest longevity, the best speed rating, and the hottest air temp is actually the silver ones. But the silver ones actually have the lowest amount of grip. 
So I want a grip. So let me know guys if you know in the comments, let me know if you know what the actual speed rating is for this. I imagine these gold label ones are still capable of over 100 miles per hour, but I can't expect them to last very long. But I bought them for this reason right there. The high amount of grip. So what I'm gonna do guys is get these ripped open and we're gonna go ahead and install them. And if you're wondering what the part number is, it is ARA 550071, D Boot Hoon 42100, 2.9 gold belted tires. So let me go ahead and rip these open. I'll go ahead and get them installed. And here's the wheel also guys, it broke. So here's a better look at it. You guys can see it actually split the rim. So that's also the rim that's broken. And I was wondering why I was hearing a noise. So these ones lasted, I don't know, these didn't run, last a ton of runs. I didn't really hoon with this thing. I just kind of was doing speed tests with it. But this wheel and tire didn't last that long. And these are supposed to be the ones that have decent longevity. So anyway, guys, let me go ahead and get these ripped open. And I'll go ahead and get them installed. And we're going to wrap up this video. Alrighty, guys. So all we have to do is get off the wheel nuts. And then the wheels come off. So I got my 17 millimeter wrench that came with um, my Arma. I think it came with my Arma infraction. Might have come with my Army EXP, but it's a 17 millimeter to remove this 17 millimeter nut because this, of course, does have the 17 millimeter wheel hex adapters because a Traxxas Slash doesn't come with 17 mil millimeter uh, wheel nuts from the factory. It comes with uh, 12 mil, 12 mil wheel hexes, I should say. Let's go ahead, get this loosened up. comes off and there we go guys there's one and I did get two sets of course so go ahead get them torn open and these are the same size both front and rear and there you go guys and they feel I don't know it's hard to tell really if there's that much of a difference from feel these ones feel a little bit more worn down just because they've been used quite a bit there's actually even a crack in this rim as well this is actually the good side so these wheels, they flex quite a bit and it looks like they start cracking. I don't know if you guys can see that crack right in here. There's a crack right there, unfortunately. But that's why we're replacing them. So just go ahead, get it on there. And then we will just go ahead and tighten the wheel nut back down. I don't think I need a thread lock. These actually have some of that uh, tape on the threads. So it should tighten down just fine. I haven't had any issue with these ones coming loose and I'll just go ahead Tighten this one up Gosh. Get them snug down All right guys that one's on I'm gonna go ahead do the other three off camera and then I'm gonna wrap this video up with you guys all right, guys, boom, they are on. Um, I actually had to go back and switch them because I forgot these are directional, um, and I accidentally put them on wrong, so I had to go back, make sure they're all pointed with the arrow in the correct direction. But how do you guys think they look? They look pretty cool. I like the gold lettering. We're just going to have to see how they perform. Um, I, I mean, that's really the only upgrade I did in this video because I don't really feel like this RC right now needs anything else. I think it has enough aerodynamics where it'll stay on the ground, at least I hope so, with the body on. Um, I have yet to really use these flaps yet. So these little flaps that I put on that came from my indestructible body, that'll help I think get some of the air from up underneath. A lot of people have recommended I remove this bumper, but after the last run, I haven't had any issues with it lifting, so I think I'm gonna leave it. But I think I should probably run um, with these Lexan pieces, or not Lexan, these indestructible body pieces down um, the next time I run with the body on. Because obviously guys, the goal I have said in my previous videos, the goal is to get up to 100 miles per hour not just with this RC, but with a short course body on it. So that's the goal. The goal is to do it with a short course body. Everybody says it can't really be done. A lot of people anyway say it can't be done. I think it can be. Um, I'm fairly confident at this point. So that's why I went ahead. And uh, the only thing I changed was the wheels and tires because we need more grip and obviously the other ones were broken. So that wasn't gonna work. And hopefully this will give us enough grip. And I also did away with the, the uh, wing altogether because a few videos ago, I found out real quick that that was actually uh, causing too much, it was putting too much weight down on the back, too much downforce, which was then lifting up on the front, and then the air was getting up underneath the splitter, which we don't want. Um, so I think just how it sits is basically the way I want to run it, and the only thing like I did since the last time is put this wheelie bar back on what's left of it, just to help keep this thing, this will drag against the ground if the thing does start to lift. 
but I think we can probably hit it guys. I think we have the gearing for it. I think the power system can do it. So we just have to go get a nice day and hopefully get out there and do it. I just need to get some GPS so that video will be coming soon. I need to get a hold of two new GPSs so we can get a verified top speed and have them both strapped on so then we know for sure what top speed we're hitting. Um, but anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. It really helps out the channel as well as this video. And also make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Um, and make sure to hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I come out with new videos. Later.